figure out ways to do that and to find really good teachers. And I know, I know some of you, you like specific kinds of people. Yes, yes, I, I don't like uh, all, uh, I think, at least four, no more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so what we're trying to do is find lots of really great teachers um, to bring them in and, and uh, make sure they're appealing for you. Mm, okay. But Can we call this? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 go on, go on. Uh, I was say, can we call this the promotion or? Uh, uh, for me? Yes, yes uh, for uh, you. Uh, <laughs> we, we can call it out. We can call it Anyway, congrats, because you will have a, a better position in Colingo, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. I'm going to go, actually, I'm heading to San Francisco next week. I am. And I go um, mm -hmm. hang out with the, the team in San Francisco for two weeks and uh, yeah, it'll Are be you, fun. You will train the teachers, something like that? That's sort of the plan, that's sort of the plan. We haven't really discussed everything yet, but um, hopefully there will be some teacher training and uh, some new hirings and, and figuring everything out. So, uh -huh. But I, I, I want to make sure that you guys understand that I'm, I'm going to be available. Um, more available because right now I'm not very available as far as talking to you guys um, communication and stuff because I'm too busy planning all my lessons mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. so uh, this this will keep things a, a little bit more open communication. Uh -huh. uh, okay and how about your call I think you are better today quite a bit better yeah I still I st it's still there a little <laughs> bit I'm a little bit nervous but uh, yeah, I'm feeling better. Okay. <laughs> uh, Alejandro. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Uh, how are you? I'm good. Alejandro, I can't hear you very well. It's a little bit quiet. Um, really? Yeah. Can you hear me? Ah, there we go. That's better. Okay. And. Where is this picture, Alejandro? Well, it's the um, mountain in my, of my country. In where? It's a mountain of my country. Ah, okay, okay. And you're? Are you from Chile? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm from Peru. From Peru. Ah, yes. Okay. What What mountain is this, Alejandro? What? What mountain is this? Where is this in Peru? Where is the Cordillera de los Andes? Sorry, Alejandro, I can't hear you. I don't know. Do you have your microphone nice and close? Cordillera de los Andes. Ah, okay. Cool. Call it, call it Cordillera de los Andes. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I've done a little bit of hiking in, in Peru. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. Uh, and very you beautiful hiking. hiking. Do you practice hiking? Do I what? Climbing. Do you practice uh, climbing, hi hiking? I do a little bit of hiking, yeah. I, I like to hike. I like nature, for sure. Well, in Peru, there are uh, difficult mountains to hiking, and it's the. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember when I was in Peru where it was in the Cordillera. Um, there's, a, there's a big town to start from it. I can't remember. Uh, I think close to Trujillo probably. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Aguaraz. Is that right? Or Juanuco? Juanuco has a lot of hiking as well, right? Yeah. Juanuco, yeah. Anca. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So really cool stuff. For sure. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, hello, Gadi. Gadi Auda, can you hear me? Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fine. <laughs> Excellent. Did, did you have a good weekend? Um, yes. Routine I, weekend, nothing special. Okay, I know it. You already worked yesterday, right? You have, you have. Uh, your weekend is Friday, Saturday, right? 
No, it's uh, Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday. Ah, okay, okay, right. Got it. So, so how is your week so going? Today we start. We start. Start working on Saturday. Um, it's cool. Yeah. Yes, we start work and study on Saturday. Okay, okay. Is there anything exciting going on there? No, nothing. No, nothing big. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, welcome to class. And uh, Li Hai Myung. Hi. Hey, Li, how's it going? Not bad. Cool, cool. Li, where are you from? I'm um, Korea. From Korea? All right, cool. South, South Korea. From South Korea, I figured from South Korea, yeah. And North, North uh, Korea. <laughs> where, yeah. Where in South Korea are you from? Uh, in Seoul. From Seoul? Yeah. Ah, cool. The big city. Hey, Lee, you know, um, I, sorry, I've never met you before. My name is Daniel, and I'm from Canada, but I live now in Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. And you know what, Lee? Uh, on the weekend, I moved into a new neighborhood in Mexico City and it's actually the Korean neighborhood really? yeah so three days in a row for three days I've only been eating Korean food what kind, what kind of Korean food? <laughs> oh, I'm really bad at remembering the names I had bulgogi, bulgogi. Um, bim, bim, bimbap bimbap, bimbap. bimbap. Bimbap, yeah, really good, really good. Um, I had lots of kimchi, lots of kimchi. <laughs> yeah. uh, and some other soup, uh, some other soup, it was really good. I can't remember all the names, but, uh, I, but I, like, I like Korean menus because they always have the picture. So I don't have to remember the name, I can just point at the picture and say, I want that one. <laughs> yeah, really good. So it's, it's nice, now I can eat good Korean food whenever I want. Yes, Korean food is very, uh, very tasty and very healthy. Healthy, yeah, definitely healthy, yeah. And that's, that's great, I love that, so there you go. Uh, hey guys, I haven't said hello to some of the people in the chat. Uh, Mohammed, I am not British. My name is Watson, you're right, but uh, no, I'm from Canada, Canadian. So I, I must have lots of um, some some British relatives, right? To have a last name like Watson. There you go. Hello, Pedro, Santiago. Well, um, who else did I see out there? I see uh, Danny's out there. Cool. Hey, man. Uh, awesome. Welcome, guys. Hello, Paris. Uh, Rayam. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Mm, going great, thank you. Good. How is the start of your week? Anything interesting happening? <laughs> no, things interesting. Just you know, I'm now in a vacation, so just stay at home and go in a line and using you know Colingo to improve my language. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. Just hey, uh, Raham, is it very hot there? Hot? The weather? Yeah. yeah, the weather. Yes. Yeah. Um, here in Saudi Arabia, not very hot, but you know, in the day it's hot, but the weather, I think, generally it's cool. Mm. Ah. Cool? Yes. Do, well, I, I know because it's desert, it gets very hot, very cold, very hot, very yes. cold. Yes. Now yeah. I think that this month for spring, uh, the summer is not starting, not yet. Ah, okay. So, okay. Yes. Then, hey, Ram, do you uh, do you need air conditioning or a fan when you're at of home? Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> All okay. the time we use uh, air conditioning. Air conditioning, yeah. You, yeah. you know, Ram, here, here in Mexico, most people don't have air conditioning in their houses. Um, so yeah. you, often you see people just go into the pharmacy or the store just because it's really nice and cool. So people yes. kind of walk. Just to get away from the heat sometimes. 
I think here in Middle East, all the houses have a air condition. Yeah. I think they cannot live without the air condition and fan because they're yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> sure, you get addicted to air conditioning. It's so nice, right? When it's really hot. It's like you can control the temperature. Yes. <laughs> cool. Hey, Sarabet. Hello. It's been hey, a while. Uh, lots of new things over there. Huh? I saw your well. pictures with Rene uh, Benjamin. You look like Mexican yeah. gangsters. Three people. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really cool, Sarabet. Yeah, uh, Rene came came down from Guadalajara and, and Ben came, everybody came to visit, it was nice. And so we went out and uh, we went to go play pool, to play billiards, but um, all the tables were full, so we ate pizza and had some drinks and talked, talked for uh, the whole night. It was really fun, lots of fun that night. So it was cool. And, and, then, and then Ben said, yeah, we need to figure out more, more trips to places around the world to come visit everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, we should be ready. Anytime yeah, there you go. I can jump in here. <laughs> How's it going, Sarah? How was your weekend? Yeah, weekend got busy. I worked on a bit Spanish, studied some Spanish. Spanish is good. I start hearing some things or learning some a few structures or grammar things. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not cool. so different. It's hey, Sarvan, what what do you want to do with your Spanish after you learn? I, I don't. You, you know, I don't have job now. So if you like learn a few more languages, like uh, as well as English, it will help me like find a job in tourism oh. or something. Uh, yeah. to find something in this. So that's why I'm learning. Yeah, Spanish also sound good. Yeah. And can what kind of work do you think you would like? Uh, maybe like in hotels, like tourist guides or any kind of things. Maybe like flight attendants. So I don't like like sitting in places like tourism, like yeah. a job that I can communicate to people, like and travel or this type of things. It would be good. Cool, cool. Yeah. Hey, you know. Even even staying in Turkey, it's good, right? Because there's so yeah. many people who visit Turkey, right? Yeah, that's it's actually it's, uh, if you think like this, I'm lucky. You no, know, most of the tourists come to uh, Istanbul, and also uh, actually not in maybe summer, but in spring or something, people come to Istanbul because you can go other places in summer. Uh, okay. In winter or something, because in south of Turkey there are beaches or something. Oh, of course, it's not a problem. Even though it's, I can move there. Yeah, it's my country. I can go anywhere. I have well, relatives south, in west, in here, yeah, uh, sure. eastern. You, you know, Sarvan, I was looking on Facebook and I see right now I have three different friends from around the world who are just in Turkey only for vacation. Yeah, really. <laughs> And, yeah. You know, Sarvan, I was also thinking your English is getting so good, maybe you could teach English in uh, in Turkey. Um, no, in Turkey, my, me, we have a familiar face in Kalingo management team. If I apply ah. a job, maybe somebody will help me from inside. Okay. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, awesome, man. Uh, welcome to class. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Slim. Hello. How are you? Hey, hey, how's it going? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Good, good. Did you, did you have a good weekend? No. <laughs> um, no, why not? Uh, actually, it's raining uh, the weekend. <laughs> yes. All weekend. Not all the weekend. Only uh, yesterday it's uh, been a sunny day. Thanks. Uh, that um, I have uh, met my friends only. Let. Ah. Uh, hey, but Slim, at least at least it smells good, right? Yes. Yes. I love the smell. That's that's the one thing that's nice. 
Yes. It, it must be rainy season there right now, right? No, it's spring. But it's uh, it's uh, I can't how to say it. it's rare to uh, rarely to uh, rain in the this month. Applied. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. Cool. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. Well, yes. welcome. Thank you. Uh, hey, Victor. Hey, hello. Hey, 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 man. Victor, you know what? When I was going through all of my Vietnam stuff today, I, I realized that I deleted everything that I did last class. <laughs> so I lost, I lost half of the information. So today we're going to go over the history. So, but I, I, there was a lot of things I wanted to talk about because we talked about food last class, right? And then I wanted to talk about some of the water puppets. You got cool water puppets up in Hanoi. I don't know if you know about the water puppet. Uh, and th and then there were a few other things that I really wanted to talk about. But, uh, I lost. I lost all that stuff. We were going to talk about some clothing. We were going to talk about the alphabet. I think the alphabet's really cool. But, but um, anyways, um, I've lost all that information. So we're going to have to just look go straight to history today. Hey, uh, Victor, how was your weekend? Uh, it's good. It's good. Yeah. 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 Were, were you I, busy? Uh, I went to the cemetery. The c cemetery for what? Uh, for visit my ancestor, of course. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Is it, is this a, a traditional time to visit ancestors? Yes, it's true. It's the uh, this month. It's a traditional time to ah. visit the cemetery. Okay, so lots of people there. Yeah, it's very crowded. Huh. I I wonder if it's if it's like Mexico. Is it the same kind of thing we talked about with Mexico, the the Day of the Dead? Yes, that it. <laughs> yeah. But we have the month of the dead. The month of the dead. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Awesome. Um. Well, hey, listen, guys. Speaking of, of Vietnamese traditions, we still have um, quite a bit to talk about for Vietnam. We haven't at all looked at the history of Vietnam. But I know we have many new students here. So what I'd like to do is very quickly, we're going to go through um, different parts of, of what we've talked about with Vietnam. Unfortunately, I don't have any slides after scooters so we don't we can't talk about food and coffee and and all those fun things we talked about last class because I lost I lost half of the presentation unfortunately so uh, I was trying to sorry I, was, I made a list I was trying to remember all the things I forgot there all right so let's start here guys with the flag very quickly okay and Liliana, do you want to tell us about the flag? Okay. Uh, it's um, a red uh, base with a yellow star in the center. The um, red base uh, means the blood that the soldiers uh, sacrifice when they fought against the butter. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, uh, Fran uh, France, Japan, China, etc. And um, the, the pentagram uh, uh, means uh, the farmers, the workers, the inter intellectuals, uh, hi, <laughs> I forgot the others. Um, I think politicians were. Politicians, the militaries. <laughs> right, maybe, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, that uh, they are um, part of the, <clears throat> they uh, represent the five uh, main classes in Vietnamese society and show solidarity yeah. and connection of these uh, five classes. And, Perfect. Um, and, and blood always mean uh, 
common the red blood or which mean communists? Yeah, often the red red stands for communism as well, and definitely in the case of Vietnam, right? Cool, cool guys. So there you go. That's the, the flag of Vietnam. Kind of talking, you know, the five different points of the star, talking about the five different um, people who work within in, within Vietnam. Right? Interesting stuff there. All right, we talked a little bit about geography here, and. Let me quickly just bring up a map of Asia so people who aren't familiar with with Asian geography can see where Vietnam is, what we're talking about here. Right? So Viet Vietnam is this long country right here, right? Very long country. Can anybody tell me about the the geography of Vietnam? Does anyone know anything about the geography of Vietnam? Uh, it is a coastal uh, flower, uh, city, uh, country. Uh, that uh, coastal country. Yes, they have the boat with the ocean. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So you have some big port towns, right? Yes. Right around here, you have Hoi An, which is a very big port town. Okay. Uh, you also have here, guys. The delta. Does anybody know what this delta is called? The delta. The delta. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what's the? What's the river? What's yeah. Well, what's the delta called? What is the river called? Uh, Mekong Delta. Mekong. The Mekong, right? The, the Mekong that runs all the way from China down up through Vietnam is the Mekong, right? So you have the Mekong Delta, and <coughs> what are the two major cities? Of Vietnam. Uh, oh. um, what do you mean? Hanoi, Saigon, and Hanoi. I think. Sure. sure. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. So Hanoi is the capital, right? That's where Victor lives at the end there. That's where Victor's from. And then we also have Saigon, which now is called Ho Chi Minh. Okay. Ho Chi, Ho Chi Minh yes. City. Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh. Right? But you're right, people still call it Saigon. It was Saigon in the past. Okay? And a lot of people, to say this, to write it quickly, they put HCMC, because it's a very big name, so they just say HCMC for Ho Chi Minh City. Cool. All right, continuing on, because we, we want to get to the history today. We're going to go fast today, guys, really fast, because I want to make sure we go through all of the history. Okay. All right. So first, we talked about Halong Bay. This is up a little bit uh, cl closer to Hanoi, okay, up in the north. Very beautiful. Considered one of the most beautiful places in the world. Okay. Now, can anybody tell me about the Mekong Delta? In the Mekong Delta, there are floating markets. Um, yeah, floating markets. Yeah. Um, Anything else? Um, okay. It's also one of the most populous places in Vietnam. So many people in the Mekong Delta, and it also has very good farmland. Okay. So it's very good <coughs> for for farming. Very good for fishing. Right. Because of the because of the flooding every year. So cool stuff there, the Mekong Delta. Then, of course, whenever we talk about tourism in Vietnam, you have to talk about the beaches. Okay? Can anybody tell me where, where are the majority of the good beaches? Where are most of the good beaches in Vietnam? Anyone remember? Ho Chi Minh. Well, well, where are they in Vietnam? Yeah, did you did you say Ho Chi Minh, Slim? Yes. yes. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, close to Ho Chi Minh, close to Ho Chi Minh. Yeah, many of, of the very nice beaches. Okay, uh, down in the south you also have uh, uh, Pukok, which is very nice as well. Mm, I think uh, the in the in the middle is they have more beautiful beaches. Like near Da Nang. Yeah, Danang and Nha Trang. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I could agree with that. There's definitely some beautiful beaches um, throughout. All right, then we talked about Ho Chi Minh, right? Does anybody remember how many people are there in Ho Chi Minh? So many. <laughs> so many, yeah. So many. Over nine million. Yeah, over nine million. Over nine yes. million people. But the the population of Ho Chi Minh City, okay, is actually growing very fast. Okay? <coughs> because we talked about this before. Uh Vietnam actually has a very strong economy right now, so a lot of people are moving to Ho Chi Minh um, because there's a lot of work. There is work in Ho Chi Minh. There you go. Uh, and you can see, uh, very beautiful, Gadi, you're right. The, oh, maybe you were talking about the beaches, but I really like Ho Chi Minh City because mm -hmm. it's got very colorful buildings, right? When you look at the city, it's very colorful. It looks like a painting, almost. Um, all right. so continuing on, if we talk about Ho Chi Minh, we have to talk about the capital, Hanoi, right? Way up in the north. And can anybody tell me, what's, what's the big difference between Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh? Hello, it's, uh, it's the government capital, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh is a business and business uh, capital. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can. Say that. And in um, I don't know if I'm not sure. Uh, in Ho Chi Minh, um, people uh, are um, busy. And uh, and in Hanoi is uh, more formal. People is more formal. It's uh, relaxed and more traditional. Yeah, yeah, definitely more traditional in Hanoi. You get very traditional people, like like Victor in Hanoi. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Victor's not a very traditional person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Victor. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. Although well, Victor Victor did go um, see his ancestors this weekend, <laughs> that's true. Uh, we talked about Hoi An, right? We talked about port cities before. Okay, so Hoi An is a very famous port city, very beautiful. If anybody ever goes to, to Vietnam, you need to visit Hoi An because it really is quite beautiful. Very colonial. Very colonial, yeah. We talked about the government, okay, and, and we figured out this is the wrong building. I, I found the wrong building. So don't look at that picture because Victor told me it was wrong. But talking about the government of Vietnam, can anybody tell me what kind of government do they have? Republican. Socialist Demo democratic. No, it's, it's not Republican. democratic. Uh, it's a, um, Socialist Republic. It's socialist. Yeah, it's definitely socialist, and it, it, and it's led by a communist party. Okay, so so it's difficult to define it as a, a communist country or a socialist country, but it really it's a socialist country led by a communist uh, communist party. So uh, there you go. Um, okay, and we're going to talk more about that, obviously, when we talk about history. We talked about leaf hats, mm -hmm. right? The very famous symbol of Vietnam, right? Um, and why do people wear the leaf hats? Two reasons? To, to protect and... From the sun. Right from the sun. Yeah. And the, and the rain. And the rain. Yeah. Sun and the rain. You bet. Both. Uh, and very cool, and, and and I think I was saying before, it's not it's it's not a, a super traditional thing, um, in that in that people don't still wear it. You you see lots of people wearing the the non la throughout Vietnam, so it's it's cool. It's not just something you find in a tourist store. You see lots of people wearing it. Uh, you know, in Vietnam, only uh, poor people are wear. Only poor people wear the leaf hat. Yeah, well, 
and, you know, and and one more thing. Yes. Uh, the women wear it when they wear it outside. On okay. on the way. When they're outside. No, when you wear the traditional clothes. Ah, when they wear the the owl. Yeah, outside. I think so. Ah, okay. Okay. Do you, do you know what's made of? What is it made of? It looks yeah, like. Uh, it looks like straw. Bamboo. I I think I think we talked about. I think it's made from from bamboo leaf. Mm -hmm. The leaf of bamboo. Okay, and then and then you see on the inside here, Servet. Yeah. This part right here is actually bamboo. So the the mm -hmm. the, the shape of it, all, all the the long parts here that go around. Yeah. Okay. Those are actually bamboo, and then the leaf on top is bamboo leaf. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, Victor, you know where I saw it the most was in the Mekong Delta. I saw lots of people down in the Mekong Delta wearing it. And, and we, we talked about that too, though, Victor, that um, where it's really hot, you see it a lot more too, right? Yeah. Um, okay, and then, guys, quickly, um, we talked also, this is very important. When you talk about Vietnam, you need to talk about scooters because they have more motorbikes, scooters, than anywhere else in the world. Okay? And if you've ever been on the streets of Vietnam, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's a, you, if, if you've never ridden a motorbike, this is not an easy place to learn how to ride a motorbike. <laughs> because everybody's all over the place, and you think, "Wow, I don't, I don't know why there aren't more accidents." <laughs> but people know what they're doing. People drive very close to each other. Uh, there's a lot of honking. You hear a lot of horns, okay? and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy, but fun too. Fun to watch, for sure. <laughs> fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, good fun to watch. You could you could sit there and. Drink a Vietnamese coffee on a cafe and just watch the motorbikes. Yeah, right. and beer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Yeah. Cool, guys. Um, we talked about lots of other stuff. We talked about food and things, but honestly, I need to move on because we only have 24 minutes left and I want to get through the history. And we have a lot. We have a lot. So we're going to try and go quickly through the history of Vietnam. All right. So starting with the very early history of Vietnam. Okay. Um, let's see. Alejandro, can I get you to read the first part? Alejandro, are you there? Oh, okay, we lost Alejandro there. Gadi, can you read for us 3000 to 1000 BC? Okay. Oh, did we lose Gadi? Uh, there we go. Okay. Roaming tribes from uh, southern China move into an area called the Red River Delta, where many uh, Indonesian people are already living. Together, they form the earliest uh, and Anxious stores of today's Vietnamese people. Cool, cool. So there you go, guys. Um, Vietnam is actually the, the the people come from kind of two two different peoples, right? You have the Indonesian people of of uh, of the the warm tropical areas, and then you have the Chinese from from the colder areas up north, right? So so this is how Vietnam Vietnam was kind of formed. The Vietnamese people. Um, many years, right? We're talking almost five thousand years ago. Did you so, uh, yes, okay. Slim. Can you make it bigger, the text? Sure. Please. Yes, of course. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Let me get rid of this part too. That'll help. Okay. All right. 
Cool. So remember, guys, when we were talking about um, the Red River, right? It goes right through Hanoi, right through Hanoi. So this is a very important part of uh, of Vietnamese history, and this is why I think Hanoi is still the capital, because it's such an important part um, with, within the history of, of Vietnam. Okay, it's it's uh, where the Vietnamese originated. Okay, it was in the north. All right. Continuing on, continuing on, so 2007 B.C. Uh, Lee, can you read that for us? Okay. The Chinese uh, general establishes the independent kingdom of Nam Nambia. 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 It's made up of what is today, Mudan, Vietnam, and part of the Good, good. So you guys, you see here, this became an independent kingdom. So this was, this was important. You had, dur during the time there was China, there was Vietnam, and then an independent kingdom came about, okay? In an area that is a little bit of Vietnam and is quite a bit of, of, of China, right? A big part of China as well. So this was an independent kingdom. Uh, interesting. Do they teach that in the history books, Victor? Um, in Vietnam? You know, honestly, we consider it a shame of our history. So, A part of your history? No, a shame. A shame? Oh, really? Yeah. So, it, we, we, we don't talk much in the book. Ah, okay, okay. Interesting. It's always interesting to, to, to find out um, what, what people are shame, what, what different cultures are shameful of. I think I think if, if in Canada, if we talked about the shame of our country, it w we would have so many because uh, because of all, all the different histories we've had and the different people that have been here, right? Um, okay. Yes, servant. But I think it's good. Normally, people don't accept their faults, even though maybe even though it's not fault, maybe they think bad about it. But if you look at other nations, they always uh, represent themselves as the the most gracious, the most bravest, the most yeah, the best nations. Yes, yeah. you're right. You're right. It's funny the the way we do that, right? We we talk. It's it's interesting the amount of pride. That we have uh, in our country, right? There's this whole idea of country pride, and it's funny when we come to a place like Colingo, and we're all <laughs> sitting here from a different country, and we we have to like okay lose all of this like this this huge pride because we no longer feel I think that our country is the best, right? A lot of the time, the country is just kind of defined by borders, right? Yeah. that were made by politicians, but it doesn't change the difference between between people, right? Interesting. And and history, history kind of goes like this, where who is this, who are these people, who are these people, and they're always mixed, right? For sure. Cool. Um, oh, is that the right one? Yeah. Servet, can you read the next part for us? Oh, one. sorry. Uh, was I on Servet there? No. Sorry, I skipped way ahead here. I'm on Liliana, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, the rulers of China, Han Dynasty, conquered Nanbian and made it part of the Chinese Empire. China rules over the Vietnamese for more than 1,000 years afterward. While they are heavily influenced by Chinese arts, religions, politics, and farming. The Vietnamese work hard to preserve their unique national identity. All right. And this is very important, guys, this last part, right? Two things here. The Vietnamese work hard to preserve their unique national identity. And the Chinese ruled Vietnam for more than 1,000 years. I mean, this is really incredible, right? That if the, the the Chinese were there for more than a thousand years, and the Vietnamese continued 
to hold on to their unique national identity, right? Very amazing, very amazing to, to be able to hold on to something after that long. So uh, very interesting, very interesting stuff. And so I think a lot of the time, uh, Victor, when we talk about shames of the country, we can also look at the pride. There can be pride of a country within the same thing, right? So um, to have held on to a, an identity, even though there was a, a, a huge dynasty kind of controlling the country, is very amazing. Uh, yes. I, right. I'm surprised you were put a sentence in <laughs> it is. Surprised by the sentence? Yeah, because uh, uh, that's what I thought, but I don't think uh, many people realize it. That they that the, they did they don't realize that they were able to preserve their identity. Uh, they, they don't realize it's a thing to be proud of. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. It, it depends on how you look at it, right? Right. But I, I really think it is something that, that you can be proud of because it's difficult, especially when, when there's a, a country that's so powerful, right? And the Chinese emper empires were very powerful. So to hold on to um, a unique culture is interesting and, and, and something definitely you can take pride in. All right. So I'm sure this is talked about a lot in Vietnamese history, right? Mo Quen? Is this talked about, Victor? Mo Quen? Uh, yes, Mo Quen. <laughs> okay, good. Graham, can you read that for us? Uh, yes. The uh, Vietnamese people return. Uh, you know, I can see it very clear. Hmm. Um. How about now? Is that better? Okay. Ram, we'll get you to read the next the next part. Okay. I'll, I'll get Servet to read this one. Can you read the next part? Okay. So Servet, can you read this for us? The Vietnamese people says their independence as a Vietnamese lord named Ango Quyen defeated Chinese forces at the Ba. Dang River and regained independence oh. after after a millennium under Chinese control. Cool, cool. And one thing there, um, Servet, is is the pronunciation of Ngo Quen. Okay. In in Vietnamese um, speech, you you use a lot of this sound, and it's the same as as um, in English. The sound that you would have at the end of a progressive um, sentence, yeah. okay, ing, ing, but it's starting with the ing sound, so you say ngo. Oh, ngo, I like how. Oh. No. So imagine, no. imagine like this, Seven. imagine you're saying uh, eating, eating, okay, the, in, in English, eating, the progressive, progressive continuous uh, sent, the word, okay, eating. Now it's that sound you make at the end of eating. Yes. You have to hold it. Eating. Eating. Okay. So you start. Many many Vietnamese words start with this sound. Okay. So his name is Ngo. 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 This one is very difficult for people. Very difficult, and they, they have a similar sound in Thailand. I remember when I was there, and I remember there was an Irish guy trying to learn Thai, <laughs> and he just sat there going, go, 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 go. <laughs> and, oh, no, you're going to have so many problems with this language, right? Because for some people, when you're learning a new language, there are sounds you never make. Yeah. You never make, right? Um, and, and this works for each of you in this class for English, too, right? Is I know for for different groups of people, there are different sounds you don't make in, in your in your language. So, for example, uh, 
Liliana has a tough time making the zzz sound, mm -hmm. which is the s, 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 because in Spanish there's no differentiation mm -hmm. between s, s and z, the sound. Only, only in Spain. Mm -hmm. in only in Spain, right. We don't yeah. have a, a difference between both sounds, like, like v and v, we pronounce it right. the same way. Yeah, yeah. And, and in a lot of Asian countries, there's a problem differentiating between the R and L sound, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this happens with, with many different languages. Is you, you have uh, real problems uh, differentiating the sounds. So one of the big ones in, in Vietnam is the N sound. Mm -hmm. Learn how to do that if you've never spoken uh, Vietnamese before. Uh, Lok Trung, yeah, I have been to Vietnam two times, actually, two times. I really liked it. Yeah, lots of fun. Lots of fun and great people. Um, okay, so cool. So I think uh, Ngo Quen is um, probably one of the more famous people in, in Vietnamese history. Is that true, Victor? Uh, yes. Yeah. Is it talked about a lot? To, is there a lot of pride in, in Ngo Quen? Uh, not so much, but no. yes. Not, not like more modern history, right? I think there's yes. more pride. Yeah, any modern, modern history. Yeah. So. Right, yeah. Exactly. There's so much modern history as well. Yeah. All right. The next part here. Uh, Ram, can you see that? Else, no. No, not yet. Okay, we'll yes. we'll try to come back to you then. Uh, Slim. Yes. Slim, can you read that for us? A pleasure. Plans Nigan and uh, unite in units uh, the northern, central and so and southern region of uh, his country and call it Vietnam. The plans and the, the empires who follow establishing established programs to build new bridge and castles and the store all structures. Good. So this is really important, guys. Is that the first time the country is called Vietnam is in 1802. Okay. So very interesting that uh, it's un under Prince Nguyen and. Nguyen. Nguyen. And there's that tough one. There's that tough sound again. Nguyen. Okay. Um, speaking, speaking of the alphabet, though, uh, Victor, do you know the history of, of the alphabet? Uh, yes. Of, it was built by a, a uh, French priest. A French priest? Yeah. And mm. it's based on Portuguese, I think so. Oh, okay. Okay. Based on Portuguese <laughs> alphabet. Yeah. Right. And do you know when when the alphabet started in in Vietnam? Uh, around this time. Around. Around this time. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So this is this is a pretty interesting thing, guys. Is if anybody's ever seen the alphabet of of um, Vietnam, okay, it uses the Roman alphabet. Um, with with some extra symbols in there, and and the reason that the, the French priest I think did this was to make it easier um, for people to learn. I think this was the idea, right? Is that right, Victor? Yes, it's true. Yeah, I thought so because it, it, uh, apparently you have to learn many less symbols if you to learn the Roman alphabet for speaking. Um, Vietnamese. So now you, whenever you hear the sound, even though it's an Asian sound, the, the writing is using the Roman alphabet, which is very interesting. And I think it's uh, one, of, one of the few countries in Asia that uses a Roman alphabet, but still has a very, um, very Asian sound to it, right? Sounds like ng, ng, right? Do they have tones in Vietnamese, like Chinese or other Thai or something? I, I yes. think maybe what there's is there four tones, Victor? Six, six, six tones. Six. <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult language. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Yeah, it's 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 um pretty interesting though, and I think there's there's tones, and then there's also 
accents as well, right? There's tones and accents. Uh, and accents? What do you mean by accents? Like the the symbols that go over some of the letters. You, you say them not just like tones, but uh, uh, sounds that you make with your voice that, that uh, aren't aren't made within um, most most languages using the Roman alphabet. Like you mentioned in the uh, US uh, accents in English. What's that, Slim? Like a bitch and American accent in uh, English? Mm, not, exactly. That's not, not exactly what I mean. I, I, I just kind of mean the, the use of the voice changes a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. be, because, because you're using the Roman alphabet with a sound that it's... Um, that it, maybe the Roman alphabet was never really designed for, so it's, it's used in a different way. You have a lot of accent marks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like uh, this. Do you mean right. like this? So let's... Accent, like, like a tilde in Spanish? Right, like that. Exactly. Uh, Victor, can you write us something in, in Vietnamese? Uh, <laughs> something? Maybe, um, how about something like, good afternoon, how are you doing today? Uh, a greeting, a greeting. A greeting, sure. Okay. And how to say it? <laughs> and how, yeah, and then you have to pronounce it for us too, Victor, so we can hear the Vietnamese uh, accent. Don't <laughs> <laughs> but Vietnamese, uh, how do you pronounce it, Victor? The sound Vietnamese, the, the word Vietnamese? Okay, so there you go, so there you've got the accent. How would you say that, Victor? Um, chào buổi sáng. Chào buổi sáng. So it means uh, good morning. Okay, all right, excellent. So if you look at it, it, it it's easy, um, I think, for foreigners to learn the language compared to some other languages because of the fact that it's using the Roman alphabet. So if you already know the Roman alphabet... Um, oh, yes. But it's helps. the same. Yeah, the same. Our language is very flexible. Flexible, yeah. yeah. And Victor, but you have, in Vietnam, you have the same orthographic style like in French. And the, I don't know how to say the uh, uh, the stress or the accent is uh, turned to right and turned to left over the vowels. It's the same as in French. I know, I know what you're saying, Liliana. There's actually many more accent marks, though. Yes, I confirm. No, but, 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 but I mean, only this accent is the same in French. To turn to right, turn to left over the vowels is the same. So, uh -huh. Victor, she's saying like the, the, the accent marks that go like a straight line over a vowel and a straight line over a vowel in different angles. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, it uh, presents a different tone. Uh, and, hey, Victor, can you write Vietnamese using Chinese characters? Is it possible? Oh, it's very Asian. No one uses it. But is it possible? Can anybody do it? Maybe very old. M very old people can do it. Okay, yeah. got it. Daniel, can I ask you something to Victor? Sorry. Of course. It's like uh, la it's like uh, Latin language. It's things. Right. Uh, but you 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 understand uh, well with uh, Chinese. Uh, you can understand them. No, Victor? not no? at all. It's completely different. <laughs> no. no? <clears throat> But Vietnamese uh, comes from a uh, Chinese language? Um, we take a part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's a real mix, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, things have changed over 4,000 years. I think there's been a lot of changes in the language. Okay, um, continuing on so we can get to modern history because there's the modern history that's very important here. Okay. Um, Slim, can you read that for us? Yes. <laughs> I 
have read, uh, read before um, anyway. Ungreeded by Vietnamese position against business ideals and Catholic missionaries, the French launch their first major attack. They fire open the Vietnamese at the port of Dangan, the city in the center of the center of Vietnam. Vietnam. Good. So this is a long a long period of, of history in Vietnam, and this is the the beginning of the French. Okay. The colonization. French. French colonization. French colonization in Vietnam. And does anybody know what are some um, leftover um, symbols of France within Vietnam? Does anyone know? Remember when we talked about food? There were a few. Ah, uh, let's. Well, we talked about one thing. Remember, we talked about banh mi, the food banh mi. It's actually in in um, almost a baguette, right? So you you find a lot of uh, baguettes. Mm -hmm. Ah, the sandwich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sandwich, right? The, the bread. Okay, so you have some good bread in Vietnam. You also find um, <coughs> snails. Remember, we talked about escargot in France. So, mm -hmm. in in Vietnam, you can also get you can eat snails, okay? Uh, and and quite a few other things, right? Um, even when we talked about the coffee, when we talked about the coffee. Vietnamese coffee, although it's grown in Vietnam, the system in which you you brew it is from a a French. Um, French drip system, okay? What's this? Yeah, for sure. So very cool, very cool. Um, all right. So continuing on here. Uh, Ram, can can you see the next part? Ram, can you see that? Maybe I can try. Okay. Uh, France takes control of Vietnam in uh, in 1887. Uh, uh, it becomes a French colony. The yeah. French te take change of Vietnam's. Um, I can see this. Farmlands. <laughs> Farmlands and uh, mm, I can't. <laughs> Animals. Okay. Minerals. Yeah. Minerals and other nat natural. Uh, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Resources. They also introduced the Vietnamese uh, to European. Oh? Yeah. Europe. European. Uh, mm, uh, what is? European schooling. Schooling and 